All right, let's move it on in. We'll get started this afternoon. Brother Andrew, no lawsuits, please. <laughs> oh, so thankful for the morning that God gave to us. Thankful for the Word of God, amen, and uh, what God's doing, and uh, appreciate that, and uh, appreciate you being faithful, serving the Lord, amen, so just keep praying, all right, let's grab your songbooks, turn over to page number 96, page number 96, hark, tis the shepherd's voice I hear, bring them in, bring them in, page number 96, let's stand and sing all three verses together. Let's take, we're pausing 45 seconds for station identification. I forgot that Miss Mary told me they had to take off for this afternoon, and so Miss Shepherd's going to come and play for us. And so thank the Lord for that, or else it would all be on Brother Jed with the violin. He could do it. He could handle it. Page number 96, bring them in. And Brother Bob on the guitar, he could cover it. I know he could do it. Heart is the shepherd's voice I hear Out in the desert dark and drear Calling the sheep who've gone astray Far from the shepherd's fold away Bring them in, bring them in Bring them in from the fields of sin Bring them in, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Who'll go and help this shepherd kind, help him the wandering ones to find. Who'll bring the lost ones to the fold, where they'll be sheltered from the cold. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring the wandering ones to Jesus. Out in the desert hear their cry, out on the mountains wild and high. Heart, tis the master speaks to thee. Go find my sheep wherever they be. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in. Bring the wandering ones to Jesus. All right, turn over to page number 320. 320, shall we gather at the river? <clears throat> shall we gather at the river Where bright angel feet have trod with its crystal tight forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the bosom of the river, where the Savior King we own, we shall meet the sorrow never, neath the glory of the throne. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace 
Christ our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Brother Nate, would you open us in a word of prayer this afternoon? Dear God, we thank you so much that we can be here and uh, worship you today. Uh, we thank you for the beautiful day that you've given inside and out. And we pray that you uh, help our hearts not to be focusing on what we'll do after church, but to stay on you all through the afternoon service. Help pastor to bring your message so that we can all hear it and help our hearts to be convicted. I pray this in your name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Brother Mike, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> oh, no. I know I'm missing something. We got his sword here, so we got the sword. He was visiting. I can't, I can't go into the battlefield unarmed, can I? That's what Miss Barbara McHatton said to me on, was it Friday night or something? Don't go into the battle unarmed. And so, thank the Lord for that. Amen. Let me share just a few announcements with you, and then if you have a word of testimony, we'll take a few testimonies. Thank you again for praying. And uh, we, we stopped, and I was reminded from um, Saturday of last week. We made it Friday down to Statesville, Virginia. And then we had some time Saturday. We were meeting a pastor friend of ours in the other Concord. They call it Concord. North Carolina, and uh, meeting good friends of ours there for lunch. So we had some time, and so all around Charlotte, you're gonna, you're gonna, you'll think this is carnal, but that's where NASCAR is based. Amen. And uh, so we had some time on Saturday morning. It is based down there, Miss Barbara. So we had to go to Hendrick Motorsports, okay, their museum that's down there, Jimmy Johnson, number 48, that's, that's Ruth's driver. And, uh, and so we went by. There is a spiritual truth, okay, aside from all of that. Just neat to walk through it. The theme of this week, I told you, kind of took on that we're, we're in this thing together, okay, laboring and working and serving the Lord. While we were there, to give credit where credit was due, there, there was a car. It was in their museum. And for this entire company, it was their 200th win, okay? And um, for, for Hendrix, Jimmy Johnson was driving it in Darlington, South Carolina. And he took his helmet. And I, and I just want to bring this up, Lord, as I was thinking on this. He took his helmet, understanding that it wasn't just him that accomplished all of that and took his helmet back and every person that had participated in one of those wins to reach that number 200, he had them autograph that helmet, then they gave it to the owner. And they had that on display there. And so then we get into the conference and we heard messages um, on envy that listen, we're in this thing together, and it's not, can I, can I say envy is not just a young Christian's sin, okay? But here's this evangelist that's been preaching, I mean years. He said, it took me seven years to get a full calendar, and he said, now, he said, I can't fit another thing, Brother Brian McBride. And uh, he said this, he said, I've been preaching for years, he said, but if I'm still standing around talking to pastors, and a pastor will say, I had so-and-so come in for a meeting. He said, the thought still comes into my mind, well, why didn't he call me? And he said, that quick, he said, no, I couldn't go preach a meeting there if I wanted to. He said, I don't have the time. But it's still the thought that comes to mind. 
And he said, so I'm not just preaching to everybody else. He said, I'm preaching to myself. He said, both envy, you never outgrow it. He said, we're in this thing together. We ought to rejoice when someone's rejoicing, weep when someone's weeping, brothers and sisters in Christ. That's who we are. Well, then we heard a message that um, it was on Thursday morning, Brother Alfred Willis, uh, 72 years old, had a heart attack a few years ago, but went to the doctor and his heart's as strong as it's ever been, so he preached on Thursday morning. And he preached on crying from the cave and preached out of um, Psalm 142 and 1 Samuel and about David being in the cave and started talking about how we go through cave experiences, and that's where David was. But he said there was a group that came, and you go back into 1 Samuel, I think 20 or 22, and it was the poor, the distressed, the discouraged, and it names all of these groups that came to see David. He said they thought they were coming to see David, but David really needed them to come while he was going through his cave experience. He said to be able to help him come out of the cave. And he said, we as Christians, we go through this. And he said, you've been through a cave experience? He said, I've been through a cave experience. He said, let's help those that are in. He used the term spelunker. People know what a spelunker is, okay? Those that go into a cave to be able to rescue those that are stuck in there. And he said, why don't we be spiritual spelunkers? As we go into the caves, other people may be going through a dark time in their life, no light whatsoever. He said, why don't we try to help them through their cave experience? And so he preached that message Thursday morning. Joe Arthur came in and preached Wednesday night, and he preached out of 1 Corinthians 16 on um, telling the church, I, I pray that I can come in winter with you that you may bring me forward on my journey. I mentioned this in Sunday school about those that we have in our lives and those that we can help in our lives on bringing each other forward on their journey, that we're in this journey together, let's help someone else. And uh, because where their destination is, if we're helping them on their journey, we get to go too. And, uh, and so I, I thought all the way through this, start, and I know that's as, maybe as carnal as you can think of, stopping at Hendrix, okay? We take time to smell the roses. We had a good time anyway. And, uh, but I thought through all of that, I said, here's a man, and I probably a lost man, that understood this isn't all about me, but all of these that have helped get us to this point. Then we go into the conference and all the preaching through the word of God brings us all to this point that it's all of us together. And I, and I thought about that coming back. I appreciate your faithfulness. I appreciate your commitment to the Lord. And it's, it's not about us, me but it's about all of us to be where the Lord's brought us today. And so I could probably take about an hour and kind of give a summary of the messages that have been preached. Listen, we heard preaching on prayer, preaching on pride, preaching on envy. I mean, just, just all these things. Joseph, I mean, Joseph was one of the supreme reconcilers in the Bible. And he said he just wanted repentance from his brethren and see if they were still going to do that again. And as soon as he saw they had a change of heart, they weren't going to do it again, he made himself known to them, weeped and hugged their necks. And he said, I want to be part of that. He said, I want to be part of reconciling people, amen, making sure they have a change of heart and they didn't want to do it again. And uh, just tremendous messages. So thank you for praying and... Um, it was, it was good for us to sit there under preaching for a week, and, uh, and so we needed it. Of course, good fellowship time, and I spent a lot of time with Brother Wilson while we were down there, and just so thankful for that. He's had a tremendous trip. I can't wait for him to be able to get back and just be able to pour it out to us on how God's blessed, taking care of things, and uh, cut ties in Florida. <laughs> I mean, just... When you show up in Florida and someone else is living in your house using your stuff and, and uh, <laughs> some of it bulldozed into a hole and, and your TV out on the front yard and they're using it for target practice and, and uh, just all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and so, but I know he's looking forward. He'll be, he's preaching in South Carolina today. He'll be in Hampton, Virginia on Wednesday night. 
And then, Lord willing, he'll be hugging Miss Marty on Friday. <laughs> and I know she's looking forward to that, too, and the kids. And uh, But just be praying as he's coming up. But just tremendous time and uh, wonderful time. It's, it's good for us. So I know some of you were able to get on and live stream some of the messages. Um, Brother Tommy Steele um, preached on Monday night and Tuesday night. Brother Joe, I mean, uh, Brother Norm Jackson live streamed it Monday night. And uh, Brother... Tommy Steele is a black preacher from Concord, North Carolina, and, uh, and so preaches back and forth. I think he walked about four miles um, while he was preaching and hopped a couple miles while he was doing it. But uh, I walked up to him afterwards, and I said, I don't think Concord, New Hampshire is ready for Tommy Steele. <laughs> and, uh, and so, but uh, just, just tremendous. He preached a message on Monday night out of Luke chapter 2. Um, about Simeon, where he had read about the Savior, read about the Redeemer, and he said, Now I've seen him, and let thy servant depart in peace. And he said, You know what? He said, We've read a lot of things, but I want to see the Savior and see the Redeemer, and I want to see the power of God. And he said, I want to be able to show him to the next generation and then be able to say, Lord, I've seen your salvation. I've seen the Redeemer. I'll let your servant depart in peace. And uh, just wonderful. I mean, just filling our souls. Convicting every message as we went down through. Exciting, good times. And so thank you for your prayers. That's my testimony from this week. It's good to be home. I didn't stay at home for more than an hour and a half before I came down to the church building. We got home about five Got things unpacked from the, from the van. The power was out anyway, so I knew the power was on here and the air conditioner was on. And, uh, and so down here for RU on Friday night by 7. So we thank the Lord. It's good to be home. There's no place like home. Amen. Maybe there'd be another word of testimony this afternoon that you'd like to share before we go any further. Someone with a word of testimony, thank the Lord for anything this week. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for that. Yes, sir. It was a blessing because um, I heard that Thursday wasn't going to be soul winning, and I was kind of bummed about that because um, I found out Tuesday. And then uh, Wednesday, I went out with my grandparents. They took me out for my birthday and got me a birthday gift. And at the register, we got to give a man a gospel tract, and there was a young, another young man across who was dealing with somebody else. And we got to give him and the lady who was dealing with the gospel tract. Amen. And my mom and I went out there earlier that day, and we got to pass those things off the track to some people at Sam's Club getting gas. Amen. It was a blessing to be able to hand out the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Yes, ma'am. Well, I did not have a chance to live stream on Monday night, but this is really neat because when Steve was talking about it, and he read through stuff, I was reading that book with him that Norm Jackson gave us. Uh, mm-hmm. Recovery without relapse or something? No. No, it's a book. Um, I think I've still got it here. Restore and recover. Rescue and recover. Rescue and recover. And a lot of the things you're talking about were the same things I was reading this week. But also, when this last thing was in the Sunday school, I didn't know what to do with it. Like the Lord put something on my heart. Amen. It was actually about Christmas and it was about Holy Week and Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Same Holy Spirit can work down in South Carolina and work up here in New Hampshire. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Six saved up in northern Vermont, huh? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And give me your granddaughter's first name again. Jess. Jess. And she's home from Australia. She's been raised, her parents are missionaries over in Australia and been there since the late 80s. And uh, so she's home for a few days visiting Grammy and Greppa and uh, back from Australia. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Someone else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think it was this week that someone that I know came in with their friend, and she gave me her testimony and also gave me a verse to dwell on that night. I thought that was really good blessing. And that night I was thinking to God about it, and for some reason I was just like, okay, it's going to come in again tomorrow. And they actually did. And um, they actually left, and the second time when they came back, um, the friend um, actually specifically came in to give me a piece of paper with a verse and that was really a blessing. Um, and the first time that they came in, my boss was standing right there. And while they were giving me scripture and um, giving me this verse, it was just really a blessing. Amen. Amen. Yes. So I'm sitting here hearing my daughter giving a testimony. <laughs> and I was thinking about men's Bible study this Tuesday and how Brother Jordan was reading a piece of scripture. Somebody walked by us and actually finished reading it for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, and I was going to talk about the men's Bible study and how well it's such an encouragement that we should go and be a part of that. But I'm sitting here thinking it's a blessing hearing my two daughters talking about witnessing and Amen. being out there saving lives. And all I can think of is that in a darkened world, it's nice to know that there's light that's shining. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We used to use the term older folks, no, older people. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say we had the in laws. I mean, that. Someone else back here, so Miss Courtney. Praise the Lord. And Brother Jordan, do you want to give a quick word of testimony or anything? I had to find out from your wife yesterday, but Tuesday, anything happen at work?
Amen. Amen. promotion with no official title or knowledge of pay raise, but it'll be there. <laughs> Noah. Amen. Amen. They were down in South Carolina, too. Brother Mike. Yes. Amen. Folks, that's why that's why we need upstairs, classroom space, junior church, getting some space going. Amen. Good problems to have. I'm okay with that. Go ahead, Brother Dana. Yes, uh, last week during Sunday school, I shared about my niece, Alicia, who, who may have been hit by a drunk driver. He went to Western Maine Medical. He's out of ICU now. That's the phrase. And he was sitting up and talking, and uh, hopefully... Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Keep praying for him. <laughs> Good. I did get on some and, and uh, watch the video of the service afterwards um, last Sunday, and then I text Brother Mike something he had said. He said, I just said that today. I said, I was just watching the video. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and so, did he speak, I, I understand, I, I hadn't heard him preach before, but did he speak loud enough for people to be able to understand? <laughs> Were you able to hear him okay? I think, I think they did. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I won't. Yes. I praise the Lord that we're back in town. Um, I got back Friday and I just couldn't help it. I was just driving around in my car. Just, I even drove to Bake to say hi to the <laughs> staff at Bake. <Baked. laughs> and so I'm, I'm just glad to be back in town. I'm glad to be back in my church. Amen. Just back up north. Amen. Place like home. Amen. Amen. Yes. Plus the assignments are back too. Yes. Yes, it is. Miss Dale. Good. So you took. So so you took the the day off and just let him listen to Brother Mike. <laughs> oh, excellent. Someone else. Good testimonies, Brother Fred. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want you to know you're all prayed for um, before service, after service. We were over praying. They do a 10 at, 10 at night to 12 in the morning, prayer time after the services too. And so your names were called out before the Lord and prayed for. And uh, so thank the Lord for that time there. Yes, Miss Tony.
Did I hear somebody might come back in October or something? I was going to say, I didn't, I, pastor hears everything, not, not sure how much of it's true, but we do hear it. <laughs> so, he made it back to Florida, okay? I'll be honest with you, as soon as we got down to South Carolina, I said, there ain't nothing I need. One pastor said this to me, he was from Jacksonville, he said, you need to come down to Jacksonville and know what it's like to really be in the South, and I said, preacher? There is absolutely nothing that I need down in Jacksonville. <laughs> That's not right, is it, Marty? That's their home. I shouldn't say that, should I, Jen? <laughs> All right. Someone else? Yes. Praise God for the bus ministry yesterday. Amen. 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 It was a good time. I think 15 or 16 come in. So we thank the Lord for that. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be home. Amen. Grab your songbooks, turn over to page number 433. 433, Since I Have Been Redeemed. We'll just sing the first and the last verses. Let's all stand together, stretch your legs. Page 433. I have a song. Savior's name. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Jordan and Miss Courtney are going to come and they're going to sing a special for us just before the message. the stars one and all he knows how much sand is on the shore he sees every sparrow that falls he made the mountains and the seas he's in control of everything of all creatures great and small he knows my name Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain and can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine, cause He knows my name. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. I don't have all the answers to the questions of life. But I know in whom I have belief. And he knows my name. 
every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain and can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine because he knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain and can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine because he knows my name. Amen. Amen. Thankful for that. Amen. Take your Bibles, turn to John chapter number 12. John chapter number 12. I know Brother Mike Adams was going around, the leaders for VBS, teachers or whoever it may be, games, everything like that. And uh, he's got everything organized. Now understand this, we even have on there, I appreciate the thoughts, but I mean even the, the simple things of bathroom monitors, water tables, things like this all the way through for the week. And I appreciate the organization that's going into it. And uh, it'll probably be just set up at different stations. And so it's, we have enough volunteers to be able to rotate throughout the week. So you're not going to be doing the same thing um, the entire time, um, all week long. God's so good to us and uh, so thankful for that. I know you'll be blessed. And here's why. Because it's all about serving others. And so you get blessed by serving others and loving on those kids, thanking them for being here. They were excited yesterday, one of the teenage boys, because I brought the Chromebook out, the, the laptop, and I showed it to them. I said, this is for whoever wins. This is the grand prize, bringing visitors, saying scripture, memory verses, bringing your parents, putting a big push on for Friday night, bringing parents here, and a salvation message to be preached, and uh, pushing all of that. And so one of the boys, they were walking out with the, uh, the flyer, and I pointed down to the Chromebook. He said, that's easy. <laughs> I said, good. And uh, I said, your buddy thinks it's easy too, so you'll probably be competing against each other. And uh, so we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. And uh, you say, well, what about Thursday night church? We're having VBS, so we need everybody here. <laughs> okay, keep working, keep laboring, and uh, you'll, you'll be blessed being here, okay? Now, I want you to understand this. Even for Thursday, I'm not going to be in a suit and tie coming in here playing games and having VBS, okay? But I, I don't know if I'll be wearing a costume either. And uh, the Greasons brought down, they had sewed up some costumes for some medieval themes that they had. And so Miss Tracy had told me we could borrow that and everything. So they brought them down today. Got our sign out front, decorations in the, in the classroom, and picking up some more decorations Thursday morning. And that's going to look like a castle around here. So if you have an extra coat of mail sitting around the house, <laughs> something like that, we can use it, okay? And uh, someone may just have one of those. But uh, John chapter number 12, I want to share a couple, just a couple simple thoughts. I was praying, asking the Lord if He wanted me to go into the Scriptures and just share some updates from this week and kind of what the Lord had spoken to our heart about, a summary of the messages, but felt like we needed to come back to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, we're going to begin reading in verse number 34, and I'll just read down to verse number 41. The Bible says, The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever, and how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? 
And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things spake Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. As I read down through, it's not what I'm preaching on this, morning, this afternoon, but in verse number 37, when I read this verse, but though he had done so many miracles before them, these six words, yet they believed not on him. And I wrote down beside that ultimate heartache. Ultimate disappointment, ultimate heartache. Imagine how the Lord Jesus Christ felt. I guess we can in some ways kind of feel what the Lord Jesus went through. How showing great things that God hath done and people still say, I don't believe it. But having the Lord Jesus Christ walking upon the face of the earth, performing miracles, doing these great things, not just miracles, but the Bible says He had done so many miracles. <laughs> and yet they still looked and did not believe. We know according to 2 Corinthians that it's in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them lest they should believe. I'm just reminded of the work that Christ did. And I want to share a few things. We looked at great truths two weeks ago. The subject matter was, In all, glorify God. And we ended with verses 32 and 33 where He said, If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto Me. This He said, signifying what death He should die. And how that rejoicing that salvation's been provided to all. Aren't you thankful for that? I was reminded of it again as Michael gave testimony of him and his mom standing there at the checkout line and being able to give gospel tracts out. They didn't even have to pray and say, God, do you want the gospel tract to go to that person? Yes, God wants the gospel to go to them. And salvation's been provided for all. I'm reminded again because here you have lost people in verse number 34. Now yes, we're going to deal with the truth that their minds and their hearts are blinded, they're hardened, so they could not believe. We'll get to that, verses 38, 39, and 40. But we have lost people. It's not people that have never heard about Christ because here's a group of people that they answered back and said, we have heard out of the law that Christ abideth forever. You know as well as I do, you feel a little more compassion in your heart to some people that don't know any better and they still mess up than those that know better and refuse the truth. I believe it's that group in the Old Testament that the Lord wrote Ichabod over the temple and said, The glory of the Lord hath departed, you know better. You know what is right. You know you're doing wrong. And it's over. I preached a message one time at a church that I believe God was bringing them to the point of taking a step in faith. And I said, God brought the nation of Israel to the same point at the crossing of the Jordan River and God wanted them in Joshua chapter 3 to take that step and then the river would stop and back up and they could cross over on dry ground. But if they had never taken that step of faith, then I believe God would have turned them back into the wilderness and would have used the next generation. So here we have this, these people that are listening and they hear this great truth of the Lord Jesus Christ being lifted up from the earth and the death that He should die. Now, Understand this, the Jewish people are looking at the, the subject matter of the Messiah coming to be able to set up the earthly kingdom and now Jesus is saying, hey, I'm going to die. 
And they're saying, we've heard about Christ and He, he endureth forever. We've, we've read about Him. We've heard about Him from the Old Testament in the law. We know about Christ. But now you're saying the Son of Man is going to be lifted up. Who is this Son of Man? And the confusion that's there. And Jesus goes into the discourse of yet a little while the light is the light with you. And we know that Jesus is speaking of Himself here, that He is the light of the world. And we also have the comparison that we are the light and the salt. But I'm reminded again that while ye have the light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light, in verse number 36. And I was reminded afresh and anew of the limited time that we have here on this earth to walk in the light and to be the light. As Jesus was explaining, Jesus only had 33 and a half years here upon the face of the earth. His ministry didn't even start till he was 30 years old. It's going to be wonderful to be able to get to heaven and say, Now Jesus, tell us exactly what you were doing from the age of 12 to the age of 30. There's been books that have been written. I've got one at the house, The Teenage Years of Christ. It's a good book. It's taken from He Grew in Stature and Wisdom and Favor with God and Man and explaining some of those things. But the Bible's silent about all of it. On what Jesus did for those 18 years while He was here on the earth. And it's going to be neat to be able to hear that and be able to say, Lord, what were you doing? What was your ministry? What did you get accomplished? He had three and a half years of public ministry to be able to accomplish the will of God for His life here on this earth. So it begged me to go back and look in my heart saying, Lord, we have limited time. Time is our most precious commodity that is the easiest to be wasted. It was once said if we had, what is it, 86,400 seconds a day or something like that, maybe. He said if you had that much money deposited into your account at midnight every day, but it was going to be gone and everything else would be erased and redeposited midnight the next day. And you had to spend all of it. What would you do with that every day? Now can I say our time is more valuable than that? Every second that we have in life. Listen, the last three hours from this morning, we can't get them back. This week, the time that was wasted the time that was spent on non-eternal things, we have a limited window of being the light here in this world. And I wonder who, as Brother Phil gave testimony before they sang about, yes, the light being in a cave to be able to help someone else, be able to come out, but yet sometimes it feels like the devil wants to do everything he can do to extinguish that light. So that we're not the light of the world. Listen, you ever felt like you're glad nobody knew at that moment you were a Christian? Because we weren't a very good testimony. We weren't a very good light to those that are around. Another missed opportunity to walk in the light and be the light to a dark world that's out here. Now not a one of us knew. Here's something Jesus had that we don't have. He knew His hour was coming. He knew that He was taking His steps towards Calvary. He knew that no matter what took place, He still must be delivered. He still must be betrayed. He still must go through the trial, go up to the cross, and be crucified for the sins of all mankind. He knew that hour was coming, so He knew He had the time to be able to minister. But listen, not a one of us that's seated here today know how much time we have left to be the light in this world. We don't know if we've got 40 years left. I pray God will let, listen, I pray God will help me the way that that brother Alfred Willis, McCatton's knowing from down there. Now this is a good sized church. About, it seats about 850, the pastor told me. And so that platform is about three feet off the ground. So you have to come all the way over here to the side and walk down. And it, it was pretty full. They average about 450 to 500 on Sunday morning. 
And so the place was packed and he's preaching in a big way on Thursday morning. And so he goes down there and he's down in the middle and he's halfway up the aisle preaching. Well, then he turns around and he realizes how far he has to come back to the pulpit. <laughs> and he gets back up there. He said, they didn't design this auditorium for a 72-year-old preacher. He said, it's too far to be able to walk all the way back up here to get back to his notes to be able to keep preaching. Now, I'd love if God had another 40, 50, 60 years. Brother Lee Robertson, Highland Park Baptist Church down in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I think he passed away when he was 94 years old and was still preaching up to a few months before he passed away. And I thought it'd be a blessing. But you know something? We're not guaranteed of that. So I want to walk in the light. I want to be the light in this dark world for whatever time God has for us. What if you only have one week left? You say, oh, pastor, don't talk like that. Would there be any regrets of not being the light that we should be or not walking in the light? Being the children of light. We have to while the light is here. Listen, there is going to come a day that you cannot give out another gospel track. You cannot be a witness or a testimony of what God has done in your life. You say, yeah, persecution's coming. I'm not even talking about persecution and things getting bad in this world. I'm talking about when we stop breathing and we're in heaven, we can't walk in the light anymore. We can't be the testimony to those that are around us that are lost without Christ. We can't do it. That time's over with. I want to be the light while I can be. Time's running out. I don't know when the Lord's coming back. But see, then we have not just the limited time of work, but I was reminded, and even earlier in John chapter 12, it's reminded again of what Isaiah has said here beginning in verse number 38. And I want us to be reminded again that God's Word is always true. And God's Word is always fulfilled. There will not be one jot or tittle that passes away from the Word of God. Not one. It will all be fulfilled. We will not be able to stand before God in heaven and say this part of the Bible wasn't true and wasn't fulfilled. There's not going to be one part. And in fact, even if we have a misunderstanding and say, oh no, this part was, and I believe Christ will be able to look at us and say, yeah, here's where it was. You just don't understand it and you don't see it. You say, you believe that book that much? I do. This book is real. Now we see what's been fulfilled here. We see salvation's provision, what we made mention of back in verses 32 and 33. We do see the hardness of heart. That is a fulfillment of God's Word. Now, can I say this? We know that the Spirit of God will not, the Spirit will not always strive with man. We know that the end times are coming. We know that we don't have to have more and more opportunities to hear the gospel. If you're here today without Christ, God is not obligated one ounce to give you the gospel again and give you another opportunity. Every person that's here has been in services before. God's not obligated. But can I say there is a truth and a reality here. I believe in the sovereignty of God and here's what I believe took place and we see it in John chapter 12. The nation of Israel had rejected God. They had already said in verse number 34, we've read about Christ. They know about Him. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ was revealed as the Messiah all the way through the Old Testament. Revealed all the way through. And they rejected Him. So here's the prophecy. You've heard about Christ. You've rejected Christ. Now God said, now your ears are deaf and your hearts are hardened and you cannot believe. You can't. You say, oh no, that's not a loving God. What about all the opportunities He did give to them? 
And they rejected. This is not a group of people that never heard about Christ. This is the nation of Israel that rejected Christ as the Messiah and God said, that's it, I'm done with you. Set them aside. Now listen, you can study the Bible. I believe in rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Israel is called no less than five times the bride of God. God has set Israel aside. We have the New Testament church. But listen, there's going to come a time the church is taken out of here too. And we're going to be in heaven. Well, guess what's going to take place during the millennial rule and everything? God's going to bring the nation of Israel back in. He's going to be their Messiah. They'll be calling for Him as the Messiah. They'll be calling for the Messiah to come. He's going to come and He's going to rule. And He's going to reign. Church will be out of here. But listen, there is a time according to Scripture, God said, that's it for the nation of Israel. That's it. You've rejected me for the last time. Now, we serve a gracious God. But don't bank on a deathbed conversion for your salvation. You know it's true. There's something inside of you saying, yes, the Lord Jesus Christ, I need to believe Him. I need to trust Him as my Savior. It's right. I've seen it in others that are around me. He makes a difference in someone's life. But there's those that are around us that if they were to die today, they do not know that they'd spend eternity in heaven. Can I say this? Do not tempt God. And do not push God. You may not have that opportunity on your deathbed. We've heard of people, listen, I heard about them this past week. There was a, a man that got up, Brother Ed Klein, and he gave testimony. He said, we had prayed for my mom for close to 40 years. And I think it was either 11 or 14 days before she died. It was one of them times, he said, I was there, and he said, I had just been praying, saying, Lord, would you give me one more opportunity? He said, God, you don't have to. You don't have to give an God, you've given dozens of opportunities for her to hear the gospel. She's heard it. People have given it to her as clear as day. And he said, God, you don't have to. But God, if you'd be gracious and give me one more opportunity... And he said, I'm going to pray, and God, you tell me when to give her the gospel. And he said, it was a Sunday morning. He said, I was sitting there beside her hospital bed, and he said, it just seemed, and he said, Mom, he said, you remember when you used to take me to church? And she said, oh yeah, those were good times. He said, the Holy Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, go ahead. And he said, I looked over and said, Mom, you know, we can just have church right here in the hospital room. He said, wouldn't that be wonderful? She said, oh, that'd be good. He said, we started singing Amazing Grace right there in the hospital room, going into having church. And he got done and he said, now, Mom, wouldn't it be a good day to trust Christ and to get saved? Amen. She said, it sure would be. He said, I went through and he said, was able to lead her to the Lord. And he said, it was one of those times. And listen, you've had these, but it's like you've been praying for it, praying for it, praying for it. Then it happened. And it's like, I can't believe that just happened. I mean, it, just, it was just like, <laughs> okay, that just happened. And he said, God, give me peace, settled it in my heart. Now, listen, you don't know you're going to have 11 days ahead of time. Now, can I take it a step beyond salvation? When God's speaking to our hearts about obeying Him and living for Him and opportunities for service, you can only put God off so many times before He says that's it. I was reminded years ago, I, I used this over in Ghana, West Africa. It was probably, I'm guessing now it was probably nine years ago now. We had a team, we'd gotten in late. Honestly, we didn't get to bed until 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And we were up at 4 o'clock, had to leave by 5 to start traveling. Short night. I get up and I said, let's have devotions together, got the, the, the team together. And I took them over to Esther, where we always preach for, for such a time as this. But at the beginning of that verse, Mordecai said to Esther, 
that if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their deliverance come from another place. Now I thought God had it planned to deliver the Jewish people. He was just willing to use Esther if she was willing. But if she wasn't willing, God was still going to deliver them. And I thought, you know something? Now listen to me. God can choose to use Granite State Baptist Church. But if we won't be used, God will use someone else. He's going to show His love to these people around us one way or another. Now here's the problem. They're flocking to places with a false love and a false service and a false attitude with no gospel whatsoever. They're flocking to those places. You know why? They want someone to be able to love them. Now, we can either do it with the truth or they're going to go try to find it somewhere else. I'm just thankful God's given us a Bible. God's given us an opportunity to be able to serve Him. And you know something? For 2017, God has us here for such a time as this. I believe that. But I'm not too proud to say God could use someone else too. We just need to be a willing vessel. But I'd hate to get to the point of God saying, listen, you didn't do it. I'm done speaking to you. You're on the shelf. It's over. Write Ichabod over the door. Glory of the Lord hath departed. Listen, there's churches all over the place. You walk in, God ain't been there for years. You can tell. Now listen, they were thriving places had the love of God, had the truth of God, the grace of God that was being used in a great and a mighty way. But I believe they rejected the Lord. God said, that's it. I'll use them over there. It's in salvation, but it's in service too. The Word of God will be fulfilled. God has a purpose. God has a plan. Now here's what I'm praying. I want to be sensitive to the leadership and direction of the Holy Spirit of God. This ain't in a selfish way, but I want God to use me and use our church greater than He's ever used any place else. That's my desire. I have underlined in my other Bible, it's on my desk, where the Apostle Paul said, I believe it's at the end of 2 Thessalonians. I probably have the book wrong. Have it underlined where the Apostle Paul said that by me, the preaching might be made known to all Gentiles. You know the burden that Paul had on his heart was just, God, if it's only me, I, I want to be used so great for you to be able to reach the world. That every Gentile, and you say, well, God has our limited circle here that will be influenced upon. No. Who's putting God in a box anyway if we'd just be a willing servant? I don't want to say no to God. I don't want to reject Him. I don't want Him to come to the point of saying, okay, Granite State, that's as far as you've come. You're not willing to go any further? Okay. No. I want our hearts softened. I want our ears open, our eyes opened. I don't want to be blinded. I don't want to, I want to have a hardened heart. Boy, we, we, we heard a message on that this week too, didn't we? On hardened hearts. And he said, you know, he said, it, you can get a hardened heart pretty quick. But it sure takes a long time to get rid of a hardened heart. You can get it real quick, but it sure takes a long time to get rid of it. Can I say the word of God will be fulfilled? I believe in the sovereignty of God. I believe in his plan and in his will. And when he speaks, I want to be sensitive enough to be able to listen. I want to be sensitive enough to be able to obey. I don't want God to come to the point in my life that He says, listen, I tried talking to you and you wouldn't listen. So I started talking to someone else. I don't want it to get to that point. They had their chance. They had their opportunity. They rejected Him. You say, where is that? Go back to John chapter 1. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. In fact, it got to the point, the Bible says here, that He spake and departed and did hide Himself. From them. There will be a time that your final opportunity will be available. Final opportunity. It may be for being a witness to someone. 
It may be for being a blessing. It may be for proclaiming the Word of God. But listen, if you're here today and you're not saved, that final opportunity for salvation will come at some point. You say, oh no, i got plenty of time. No. Pastor texted me this morning. Victory Baptist Church up in Winthrop, Maine. He was able to preach two Sundays ago for the first time. He said he's feeling pretty good right now, but listen, he's not over 45 years old. And his time's less than a year. He doesn't know how long it's going to be. You say, at least he knows. I'm sure he's going to try to live for God while he can, but there's going to come a time. That's why every seasoned and older Christian will tell every one of these young people, don't wait till you're 40 to sell out for God. Don't wait till you're 30 to start doing something for God. Do it now while you can. You say, no, no, they need to go be successful. Listen, success without Christ is failure. No eternal value whatsoever. You may be here this afternoon, never trusted Christ as your Savior. You say, I don't understand all of that. Listen, here's all you need to understand for salvation is you're a sinner. And we all know that. I'm a sinner. Jesus died for us and paid our price. He offers eternal life. You say, I don't understand that whole book you're preaching out of. Listen, neither do I. And neither does anybody here. But I knew that I was a sinner. And I knew Jesus died for me because He loved me. And I was willing to accept it. Accept that I'm a sinner and accept the price He paid. And I called upon Him. The rest of it, God's taking care of every day. He's guiding and directing. So maybe you're here and you'd say, Preacher, I don't think I'm saved. I know I'm not saved. I don't know if I died, I'd spend eternity in heaven. It is as simple as what I just said. It's that simple. Don't push him to the limit. Don't say, hey, I've got three more years. You don't know that. Oh, when I settle down, I'll get saved. You don't know that. Today's the day of salvation. Accept him while there's time. But Christian, if he's speaking to your heart about something, do it. Don't reject the voice of God. Live for God. Serve God. Be found faithful. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God's so good to us. I can't help but ask. I wonder if you're here this afternoon. You'd say, Pastor, I'm just not sure. Would God even want me? If you're even asking those questions, He wants you. If you're breathing, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. I wonder if you're here and you'd say, Pastor, I'm, I'm just not sure that I'm saved. I'm not sure that heaven's my home for eternity. Would you just pray for me? Pastor, would you just pray for me? Just not sure. Listen, no one's looking around. I'm just, I want to pray for you. I'm not going to come to you, but I will pray for you. I promise you. I wonder if there'd be one. Just slip your hand up, slip it down. Pastor, I'm not sure that I'm saved. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up, slip it down. Let me pray for you. Pastor, I'm just not sure. Just pray. Would there be one? Don't let the day pass by. If God speak into your heart, do not. Do not miss the opportunity. Pray for me, preacher. All right, then, Christians, let me ask you this. How many times has the Lord spoken to our heart and we didn't obey? We didn't. For whatever reason we can come up with, we just didn't obey. How many of y'all would join me in saying, I want to be sensitive to the Lord, that when He speaks, I obey, and I'm sensitive to the voice of the Lord. Would you slip your hand up, slip it down? I want to, I want to follow the voice of the Lord. I want to obey Him. 
I want to listen to them. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your honesty. I know none of us have it 100%. I know I don't have it 100%. I understand that. But I sure want to be in tune. When the Holy Spirit of God is nudging my heart for service, for sacrifice, whatever it may be, I want to be sensitive that I can hear the Savior speak and I can obey. I don't want to get a hard heart that I can't hear God. I don't want my ears closed up, my eyes blinded. I want God to use us. And I want that for our church too. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy to us. Lord, I don't know if there's those that are sitting here today that are unsaved. But Lord, you're, you're so long-suffering and gracious to us. And Lord, if there are those that they're not sure of eternity, Lord, would you extend your grace to them? Lord, would you convict their hearts? May they trust you as their personal Lord and Savior for all of eternity. Lord, for those of us that are saved, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we'd be sensitive to your voice. We've listened to you for salvation. But Lord, each and every day I want to hear from you and I want to be a faithful servant. Lord, I desire for you to use us. Lord, I don't want to be like this Jewish crowd that you performed so many miracles, yet they didn't believe. Lord, just help us. Help us to be a willing and usable servant for you. And we'll thank you for what you're going to do now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God's so good to us, isn't He? Amen. amen. Special prayer request, if you would. Um, pray for Miss Victoria. I asked her if I could make mention of this. and She was hesitant at first, but then she said, No, I, I need God's people praying. And so, she's doing her best to live for God, aren't you, Miss Victoria? There's a couple females at work. Um, don't really like that, okay? And so they're just trying to do everything they can do to try to push her out, okay? And so it's her job situation. But beyond that, you know the health issue she's going through right now, her health insurance, okay? And so this is the lost world, okay? And they're, they're acting lost, just like their nature. And so, would you pray for Miss Victoria? She, she needs the prayer. Um, she knows the Lord's going to take care of her, but it's still a battle every day. Okay? And so, pray for her in the job. Pray for her, her health insurance, the medicines that they put her on, because she is blind in the one eye because of what she went through. And so be praying for it. It's, it's a necessity. She can't, she can't afford to pay for all that medication and things like that. So please pray for Miss Victoria, okay? How many of y'all pray this week for Miss Victoria? Miss Victoria, now look around. Look at your church family, okay? So when the devil crawls up on your shoulder, you can just say, Hey, devil, didn't you see that too? All them hands that were going up and all them people were praying. And may God help her, okay? So please be praying. Be praying for Brother John as he's driving home this week. I told him, I walked up to him, we were leaving a after lunch on Thursday. I walked up and I just whispered down, I said, I'll see you up north. <laughs> so we're looking forward to them getting back. Amen? Amen. All hearts and minds clear? Listen, we got some college students getting ready to leave and go back to. We're going to be missing the Browns. They're going to be taken off, but we got a new licensed driver in the family. I saw that. She passed her driving test. Miss Sarah is going to be taken off to school. Tim's going to be heading down back to Florida. We're all going to be jealous come February. <laughs> They're in Pensacola and we're not. They have white beaches and we have white ground too. <laughs>
So just be praying. Yes. Melissa Hill. Yeah, she threw her back out. Not sure. Well, I didn't get an update whether it's herniated disc or, or whatever. Saw them. Saw it. Jack Judson went through surgery. The doctor said Judson is doing wonderful. That cranial surgery. He's got his scar and everything healing right across the top of his head where they had to cut open the skull and uh, doing tremendous. So the next week or two we have set up, we're going to be Skyping um, with the Lockhart family, the missionaries we support down in Brazil. And we're going to be Skyping with them so we can see them and be able to be a blessing. Amen. My heart's full from today. Amen. Appreciate you all being faithful. It's been a good day in church. Amen. All other hearts and minds clear? Amen. Nothing else God needs to do, is there? Amen. All right. You're at liberty to go.